Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Escape from New York. This is a favorite of mine. A movie directed by John Carpenter. One of my favorite directors. However, this is one of those movies that skirts the, the borderline between a good, bad movie. And it's a hard sell looking back, you know, from my age and when the movie captivated me and now uh, to people of this day and age or to new um, audiences. However, it develops such a cult following and it's one of my favorites. So it's written by John Carpenter and Nick Castle. It stars Kurt Russell, Lee Van Cleef, Ernest Borgnine, Donald Pleasance, Isaac Hayes, Harry Dean Stanton, Adrian Barbeau, who I had a crush on when I was younger. It's got a great cast. It's got a weird pacing to it that gets you caught up in the shenanigans that are going on. But I really love this movie. Um, and it, like I say in some of my podcasts, there's you know, an honesty you have about you know, what I enjoy so much, but is it is it really very good? A movie like that, I would almost, you know, just put in here, would be like Blade Runner. It's a movie you look fondly on, and it's well made. You like it, but you can see where people aren't going to like the choices that were made for the pacing. And, but like anything like this, you will get an audience, and who are going to love it. And I think this is like one of those type of movies. I just get a kick out of it. I don't know if it was because it's a John Carpenter anniversary. Maybe I came across this again and I just got excited to watch it again. <laughs> I was surprised that I haven't done a podcast on it. So here we are. Right. A 1981 uh, sci-fi action film. Kurt Russell at his best. John Carpenter. I think he had just come off like The Fog and Halloween. Because uh, I really love Big Trouble in Little China. So um, I geek out with a lot of John Carpenter stuff. But when you, you know, trying to be honest about it, um, this is campy, it's over the top. You have a dystopian future where, and, you know, how, you know, topical is it that there's a war against China and the Soviet Union? Uh, Manhattan's been turned into a prison. And. It's just, uh, you know, the whole premise, the whole thing. It's a really great movie of its genre, though, uh, when you look at, you know, the, the political statements you're trying to make, and, you know, executed well. And I think John Carpenter does an adequate job, but I will entertain the, um, you know, counterparts about what could make this a good movie in some people's eyes and what wouldn't. But we got, uh, like I said, uh, Kurt Russell, he's snake. Pliskin and he's special forces, but he was arrested for something. He's going to get sent to, uh, you know, sentenced to Manhattan, and they make him an offer because the president's uh, playing on some summit meeting to, uh, you know, bring peace to the world. Crashes there, and they make him an offer. Look, you save the president, we'll give you a pardon or whatever. But just to make sure, we'll put this explosive in your neck, and if you don't do it in a certain time. It'll blow your artery out and, you know, say goodbye. It's fun. It's uh, it's one of those examples of people maybe loving their craft and just putting what they want out there. And you see that a lot in the independent movies now, which is great. Because I think it's a great boon to the industry where it's a day and age where, you know, independent stories and even short stories can come to the forefront. and you know, somewhat Hollywood, or you know, although you can argue that it just tainted anyway. And, you know, you can look at the stories about the making of the movie, um, uh, you know, where you have to shoot the locations. They didn't want to do just a lot, but they, you, know, you can't take New York and close it down. They found a place that was like burned out for like 10 years and some electrical thing. And that, that crafting, that um, the talent of John Carpenter. It gives you a good atmosphere, and 
really draws you in. But again, this could be something that a new audience would be like rolling their eyes at. It's just, you know, he gets on his stealth glider, which kind of, which works. He gets on the World Trade Center. Uh oh. And he's got to go in with a tracker, some weapons and stuff, and find the president and rescue him. And the, the, the way the movie is segmented is interesting on you know what he's got to do it, it, it's kind of like um a mad max type thing you know because it's got that elements in it is a death match type thing and it might only be one particular mad max we're talking about because it just kind of correlates to it and he's got to go into these fucking characters he meets and like you know it's a real good example of a idea of a dystopian future, Manhattan's a prison, and you tell this outlandish story, you've got talented people, because they're all talented, and it, it it works in a way that really resonates with me, just to have fun and get through. And it culminates with him, you know, coming to the realization, if you want to call it some growth or whatever, that he saves the president, and he's just, it's not what he expected, it's, what he went through, and I think maybe one of the things, the points at the end is he asks the president, um, or the president might say to him, like, um, you know, what do you want? And they give you anything, you know? He's like, how do you feel about the people who died for you? It's like, to save him, like, what he went through. And there's a little twisty twist at the end. It's not major, but, you know, I keep getting to the end of the movie. I'm always smiling and enjoying this, you know, this shot at just being outlandish in movies and where it works and where it doesn't. And this is why I would recommend this movie because I think it works. And when you, you hear a name like Harry Dean Stanton, oh, well, who's that? That's a guy from Aliens, right? He's one of the, he's, I think, the first guy who gets infected and, or whatever, and he gets the uh, symbiote, or, you know, the, the creature, and he's the first one that bursts out of his chest. <laughs> So, uh, I, I really get a kick out of just the ancillary characters, the presence of Pleasance, right? Donald Pleasance, uh, one of my favorites. There's um, an element that they, gra they elevate the movie where you shouldn't, because, like I said, there's a, there's a feeling that this movie's not as good as it should be and where it would stand. But it, it, it wouldn't test. It wouldn't, you know, take the test of time, but I would recommend it to certain people to watch it. And I talk about that with um, Blade Runner. You know, you're looking at a movie which you love, it's done well, it's got critical acclaim, and you just don't know, you know, why it resonates with some people and if they're younger, or maybe even not, they've heard about it, and it doesn't stick with them. And there's that argument of, you know, subjective and objective, like, you know, what you're going to like, or... But we do have criteria for what makes a good plot, a good movie. And I had just done my Batman fucking rant. I mean, I get why people might somewhat like it. It just, you know, baffles me when you just come off watching it. But I really like Escape from New York. I think it's a classic. It, it um, has the elements that are sort of newish at the time for me, being younger. Um, you know, like I said, the theme of uh, Manhattan being a prison. I mean, you're young and you're going to Manhattan and watching the Kung Fu movies and, you know, 42nd Street when it was, you know, 42nd Street. It's just, you know, craziness. And you see it like what it could have been. I remember like, you know, the the um, images it invoked just watching it and the stories that continued i mean this is 81 so i'm 10 years old it's a movie i recommend still to this day but i i like to understand the balance between you know i could see you know people of this day and age analyzing this movie and giving it a not uh, such a high grade um you can go through the wiki and look at things i mean the post product the production stuff is great and making this stuff but as it's critiques you know um you know, saying that uh, Carpenter's greatest strength of making excellent B-movies, but it's also his limitation, right? I mean, and you can feel that in the Carpenter movies, and maybe that's part of um, why it resonates with me loving independent movies and 
although I don't do enough of them as, as podcasts uh, in, in any case. Um, although I did have done so- several that uh, just jump out at me. Um, you find the gems in the things that are out there. And this is people's loves. It's to, I, you know, I get it. The guy didn't want to make a shitty Batman movie, I'm sure, right? I mean, but we're not to shit on that that much. But um, looking at Escape from New York, it came across my purview. Like, maybe it was a Facebook thing I was looking at. And, you know, you're, you're part of a group or something. And it's like some, I don't know, anniversary for it. Or something that had to do with John Carpenter that had this promotion. Maybe it was the music, because he does a lot of that still, too. And, you know, I got through it again, just still smiling and, you know, enjoying the, um, you know, just the place it puts you in. And, I, again, I think that also has to do with, you know, the time and place of your life. You watch a movie where now I could look at it and, you know, give it a different perspective. But I did my podcast on the new Matrix movie, and we can see it was a labor of love, but this the story wasn't grander. It didn't up stakes, and it had a heart to it, though. And when do you balance that with the people who are expecting things? And we won't get into the whole, you know, expect your expectations and, you know, all the bullshit Star Wars. Look, Escape from New York. I can't say that the next one is that enjoyable because they did a continuation of Escape from L.A. But, you know, the charm is there, like the um, Kurt Russell effect, you know, it's just you know, part of your childhood, like the magic of the, um, you know, everything coming together, the age and the place, the environment, and then catching it again, just captivating. And I think that's what's great about it. It brings me back. It brings me into that state of mind. And it doesn't have to resonate with bad shit that might have been going on or, you know, whatever. Because I think these are escapes and escape from New York, right? (laughs) I'm going to recommend this still to this day. It's something I think people would should watch. It's got enough of everything that I think most people will like it. And there's that element of people who are just going to, you know, be a little baffled that uh, it's gone in as much um, attention. It's such a cult following. But that happens with a lot of things that I don't understand. And it might have to do with, um, you know, just taste. Uh, a lot of Kevin James old stuff. Uh, you know, for me, Red State is the best movie he's made. I don't know if you want to count fucking making walrus movies. And uh, just like when you listen and you go through like behind the scenes stuff of like Jaws, which is fascinating, I always recommend that Jaws, The Exorcist, and you watch like directors uh, behind the scenes stuff, and it's pretty pretty crazy. And this one has that element too, and. I've always gotten that from John Carpenter that there was a labor of love and the people he worked with and, you know, he was dedicated to a certain thing and he has his trilogy of evil that is way underrated, um, which I love. Oh, but I could acknowledge that, you know, one of the movies isn't very good and, but it tells the story and, and, you know, he feels like that guy who's never sold out, who's been his own twist on things and we can talk about what the decision was with Halloween 3, which, you know, at that point he's trying to get out move on. He didn't direct it and things like that. But however, Escape from New York, the filming from the stories to the charismatic actors and the whole ensemble put together makes it work and it elevates kind of B-movie material in a way. But that I think you'll love. I think that'll, um, you know... There'd be some good uh, enjoyment from it. You get some good value of it. And even if they were, I don't know if they were talking about, um, did they ever do a remake? Hmm. Uh, You know, I know there was talks about it, but, I mean, what are you going to do with Kurt Russell now? We can get his son is pretty good, right? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. What would I see from this legacy? Kurt Russell's older. You could make him the Lee Van Cleef where he sends someone on a mission. You could do that. I could see that working. Because a good movie's going to work no matter what. And he can pass it on. Or would you see a reboot of someone else playing? Which is, I think, that we're going to do with uh, a couple of actors. Maybe even his son. But 
the music too. You got to talk about um, John Carpenter's subtlety and his way of using simple things to tell a story. That was another thing that stood out with me. Um, just how well he is at, uh, you know, putting these things together that make you feel a certain mood. And if it's from simple things like the great Jaws theme, which is basic notes and his score for Halloween and his love of music. He's a talented musician. He runs in his family and, um, you know, it shows and his understanding of how it works. But you always go back and you get this feeling, I, I say it again, like of this independent director who's always done it his way. So even if you go into like um, what his name is attached to, you know, you get this feeling of a guy who just makes his way through things, doing what he wants, finding outlets for his, um, you know, cre creativity. And I could see the, uh, you know, maybe the legacy he leaves behind is going to be a well-respected one. And, you know, other than saying, um, I even love, uh, things like Ghost of Mars, which I watch, I might have watched Ghost of Mars more than I've watched every other movie of its time and genre. There's something I get a fucking kick out of, and it's ridiculous. And I think that's why people like certain directors, you know, watch certain things. They put a certain flair that you'll know you'll get from it. And, um, you know, in their style and stuff, and it's, Always interesting to me when you hear things like uh, Quentin Tarantino might do a Star Trek movie. Or like, what would John Carpenter's Star Trek movie be? And I think it would be really bad if he wasn't into it. <laughs> you know, so you can see he's into these things. And I think that comes off with all his labor of loves. Although, you know, I think he did direct Escape from L.A. And you could tell the budget was raised. And I'm trying to think of... I guess maybe uh, The Thing is my favorite movie from John Carpenter, and it resonates to this day. It's one of those movies I do recommend on all fronts, like Well Made, Stands the Test of Time, Escape from L.A., again, uh, maybe an enjoyable romp, uh, much like you know, an Expendables movie, if you're just going to get an action movie. But, you know, it doesn't stand out as the, um, you know, the original, the first that, Really, you know, it rides that line again. Like I said, it just borderlines a really great idea with great cast and done as a labor of love, and it shows. So it's interesting to see if it's one of those movies where people think I'm crazy for love in the movie. It's horrible, like I would say about, uh, you know, what I said about the Batman movie or something. And there's a, you know, um, that associated labor of love because as much as I shit on the movie, I love Batman as a character and love my love of comic books and I want things to be good. I don't want to, um, you know, shit on anything. And like I said, again, from the beginning, when I watched this again, it had that feeling of riding the line between what might be considered good right now and what you just, you know, you just like it. And, I think I like it enough, and it has enough charm, and like I said, that it's something I would recommend, and uh, I have, because these are, these are the type of movies, I have, like I said, about Blade Runner. I will watch it with certain people, curious about how they're going to react, and, you know, the honest thing is coming around, going, look, you know, I, I love it or I hate it for whatever reason, it's not for me, and acknowledging where it's uh, done well, and it's just, you know, I'm not going to watch certain movies, but I'm sure they're very good. It's not for me type thing. Again, dystopian future, Manhattan's a prison, uh, special forces guy, breaks the law, he gets an offer, instead of going to prison, save the president, meets a cast of characters, uh, ordeals he's got to go through, in a really, really good setting, done so well. Music and score fits the way it's filmed and shot. Uh, and an ending where he's sort of the hero, but it's, you know, not, you know. They, they didn't give the impression that he didn't care, like, he had any illusions that um, 
he was saving Captain America or anything. And you can tell his attitude throughout the movie is just, you know, got to get the fucking job done and out. And I think, you know, they grow and change his look. Watch Escape from New York. I, I do recommend it. I think you'll have fun getting through the whole movie, the premise, the scene, how it all ties together. And uh, if you're ever interested, you know, you look behind the scenes and stuff, I'll always recommend um, at the top of that list is like The Exorcist, Behind the Scenes, or Making of, and or the original, and Jaws, and what they had to do to figure this out. The Star Wars also, which is hard to find in some cases. And to see where you know, there's people who love their craft, really pour it in and try to I mean, I'm sure there's no movie out there that the guys made it, so let's make a bad fucking movie. Except if you want to talk about studio meddling, right? And they just got a date, they got to get the movie out. And I think that's the problem these days. But we'll see what happens. Like I said, give it a shot. Let me know. Hope you're all doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.